Hello and welcome back. If you're just joining us, you're watching the Arthritis Show. Well, joining us today exclusively in our studios is Dr. Ronald Kratz. Dr. Ronald Kratz is the father of the new science of anti-aging medicine. Welcome, Doc. Hey, it's great to see you, Doctor. Great to you? have you. Thank you. Now, you have one of the biggest organizations right now in medicine currently. Uh, tell us about your organization, please. Well, the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine, and the website is www.worldhealth.net. The American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine is the world's largest society of physicians and scientists and health professionals who are involved in the early detection, prevention, treatment, and or reversal of aging-related disease. We have an international medical society with a hundred that, that has members in 120 countries around the world. We represent now 26,000 26, physicians, scientists from around the planet, and we're all brought together by one central belief, and that is that aging is no longer inevitable. And by that, I mean that uh, there are technologies, there are drugs, there are interventions, there's nutrition. There are all sorts of different methods that can extend the healthy human lifespan by not just five years, but 10 years, 20 years, 25 years, maybe much longer than that. Uh, now, one of, the, uh, one of the biggest contributions that I think American um, Academy of Anti-Aging, also known as A4M, has done is kind of uh, uh, produce awareness between the physicians that, or the patients that, you know, just because your doctor tells you, you know, you're older, just live with it, it isn't so. And th that's been really huge. Uh, and I became a member of the American Academy back in the 90s. And back then you, you, had, uh, you had about two, maybe 300 uh, <laughs> members, and now you have over 26,000. You can see how big that is. We've grown in, in 20 years from 1993 when we began with just 12 members. And now we've grown to 26,000. And we're in 120 countries around the world. And we're in major universities. We're offering uh, uh, graduate programs in anti-aging medicine now, soon a PhD program in anti-aging medicine. Uh, we serve not just physicians, but also pharmacists, nurses, uh, physician's assistants, PhDs, uh, the whole uh, spectrum of anti-aging. And the reason for that is, is because uh, the technology does exist. Yeah. And we can intervene in the aging process. And you need to take this very, very seriously because the difference between living a healthy, vibrant, happy 65 years or perhaps 105 years is up to you now. Absolutely. One of the, I was reading one of your books, and in your book you mentioned that back in the 1900s, the, the most three common causes of death was pneumonia, diarrhea, and simple bacterial infections. That's right. And now it's a stroke cardiac diseases, and cancer. And cancer. And 100 years from now, it could be uh, aerospace access. <laughs> and that is very much true. I that's, mean, that's that is exactly that is, true. Now, you started, you were thinking way ahead of everybody else <laughs> back about 20 years ago. Uh, what inspired you at that point? I want to take you back in time and ask you what. Well, I, you know, I always say that my success is due entirely to reading too many comic books when I was a kid. I was very much interested in the future of technology, uh, the future of the planet, the future of healthcare. And when I got involved in medicine, I was very, very fortunate because <clears throat> we did not really understand what caused aging in medicine, in science, until the 1960s. It was only in the 1960s with the advent of um, cellular biology that we began to understand the actual mechanisms of cellular aging. Before then, it was a total mystery. And so in 1980s, suddenly there became uh, the ability to intervene in aging-related disorders with hormones, human growth hormone, testosterone, estrogen, uh, with antioxidant vitamins, uh, with lifestyle intervention, with exercise, with uh, specific technologies to modify uh, mitochondrial aging. And so in the 1980s, the drugs came on the scene, and then you know, it kind of hit me. I said, wait a second, hold on. We understand the mechanisms. We have the interventions. What's the next thing we need? The next thing we need is a society of physicians to implement these technologies. And so in 1992, we created the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. Perfect. In other words, these tools weren't available before, like uh, some of these tools like the, the testosterone, human growth. It was not available before. And some of these antioxidants was not available. And 
back in the night, just the timing was right. Now, one of the people who are, who's really big advocate on, on this anti-aging phenomenon is uh, Miss Suzanne Summers. Yes, now, she is. She's really big with that. How did, how did she get hooked up with this situation? Well, Suzanne Summers was always uh, interested in personal health. Uh, and she has a, she's a celebrity and beautiful woman. And she's very concerned about her image. And so initially she was interested in what most people are interested in is the aesthetics aspect of anti-aging. And uh, Suzanne had, uh, had a challenge given to her. She developed breast cancer. And through seeking a cure for her breast cancer, she learned more and more and more about nutritional medicine, about interventions in cancer, in metabolism of the body, in aging of the body. And you see the treatments for uh, cancer and for anti-aging are very, very similar because you're both treating the basic metabolism of the cell. And so Suzanne got involved in that and became a very prolific writer and became really a spokesperson for the industry. And she looks marvelous. She has her own TV show now. She's in her late 60s. And she you know, really appears and That's acts great. and performs uh, just like someone who's 20 years younger. And that technology is available for each and every one of us. As a matter of fact, uh, the Bergen County ladies in New Jersey, these are, these are a society, uh, Harvard University, uh, just a few years ago, tried to find out what cohort of our society lived the longest. And they found the Bergen County ladies in New Jersey had an average life expectancy of almost 95 years of age, longest life expectancy in the United States, really perhaps the longest life expectancy on the planet. And why was that? Because these ladies in Bergen County who are Asian um, follow a, a very much philosophical um, viewpoint on preventive medicine. They also live close to New York. They have access to very high technology health care. They have uh, generally high incomes. These are well-educated people. Uh, they have, um, uh, most of them have advanced degrees. And they're following the anti-aging lifestyle, and it's showing us that we can live like they do using the technologies that we have today to 95. Now, when you factor in the technologies, and there's over 700 drugs in the pipeline, in the biotech pipeline, any one of which could be a breakthrough in anti-aging medicine. When that comes along, the whole paradigm of aging could shift, and instead of you know, the average life expectancy in the United States, 80, and in Bergen County, Bergen County, ladies following the anti-aging lifestyle, 95. We could be looking very shortly at life expectancies of 110, 120, perhaps even be well beyond that. Well, fantastic. That's really something to look forward in the future. Again, I want to thank our guest, Dr. Ron Klatz. Thank, thank you again you. for coming. Thank we you, appreciate Dr. that. All right. We're going to take a break at this point. When we come back, Dr. Martin Dayton would be joining us. Martin Dayton is a guru in the field of integrative medicine.